Okay. That's the Trinity. Where did the Bible say that, you liar? Amen. The word Trinity don't even exist in the Bible. No. It don't even exist. No. Where it come from, Pastor Jenner? It came from Rome. That's right. That's a Roman Catholic lie. That's right. Well, there are plenty of words that we use in the, for use concerning God that are not necessarily found in the Bible, right? We use words like omniscient, omnipresent. We use omnipotent. We use all these different words, omniscient. I think I said omniscient already. But we use all these terms to describe the nature, the characteristics of God. But they're not found in the Bible. If I was to ask Geno Jenkins, Jennings, uh, if God is omniscient, meaning that he knows all things, I'm sure he would agree with me. But yet we don't find that term in the Bible. All right. So this idea that because the Trinity is not found in the Bible, then it's false because it's not in the Bible. The word Bible is not found in the Bible. But yet that's the title, the doctrine of the, the, the book that we use, per se, that we say that we align with as Christians. Right. So, once again, this idea that because a word doesn't appear in scripture, then therefore it can't be true, is 100% false. That's right. They just tossed it and came up with it because God didn't give them the revelation of the mystery of the Godhead. That's so they right. came up with it. Mm -hmm. with the, it, it to describe Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they didn't have it from the Spirit. So they just came up with the phrase Trinity. That's right. Yeah, so that's not how any of that works. Uh, we don't just come up with stuff, right? We want to make sure whatever we believe in aligns with Scripture. Because the idea for the Christian, the Christian wants to stay away from heresy. The Christian wants to stay away from doctrine that doesn't correlate with Scripture. So the natural question is, is where did we get the word Trinity? Well, the, the word Trinity comes from an uh, individual by the name of Tertullian. He's the one that first coined the term. And so, yes, Christians adopted that term. Uh, from Tertullian, uh, the, the term Trinitas or Trinity. Uh, but once again, because we adopt the term from a theologian in the past, doesn't make the, make the concept false. In order to prove the concept of the Trinity false, you have to show within Scripture that it's false. And that's why we believe in the Trinity. Um, that's why we believe in certain theological concepts, because we believe that a lot of these theological concepts and these theological frameworks that we hold to are found within Scripture. Uh, the, the three distinct persons, co co eternal, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we believe that, they, that it is found in Scripture. So that's why we hold to the doctrine of the Trinity, not because it was just thrown up or tossed up or some strange idea um, that was just made up because we didn't get the revelation from the Spirit, as Geno Jenkins, Jennings uh, says, um, but we, you know, it's a, it's something that developed over time. We had the, the theological concept of the Trinity, but we do find it in scripture. That's the foundation. That's right. Three persons. You know, that's a lie. The Holy Ghost is not a person. No. God ain't no person. The Bible says God is a spirit. So now he says that the Holy Spirit is not a person and that the father is not a person. I'm extremely surprised that he would say that the father is not a person. Um, this shows a clear misunderstanding of what it means to have personhood um, within Scripture, especially concerning God. Um, the very fact that the Father is personal uh, and he's personal, he's involved with his creation shows a level of personality. Uh, the very fact that he has intellect, that's a sign of personality, of being personal, personality. Uh, the very fact that he has cognition, He's able to think. That shows personality. Um, the very fact that he's able to reason and lay down more laws, things like that. Uh, the, the interaction that we see throughout Scripture shows that God is personal, right? What Gino Jen Jennings believes is that person means like physical body, like physical, I could touch you, flesh. That's what Mr. Gino believes. And when the person talks about when, when an Orthodox Christian believes in the Trinity and they say that God is personal, there are three persons within the Godhead. We're not talking about physical bodies. We're more, more or less talking about cognition, intellect, uh, the ability to be personal with creation. That's what the Orthodox Christian is referring to when we're talking about persons.
We're not talking about physical bodies. This seems to be a misunderstanding of the Trinity, a foundational misunderstanding. And this is why anything that comes from Gino is taken with a grain of salt. It should not be taken as the gospel because clearly he doesn't even understand foundational aspects of the Trinity, even as it concerns persons. So should we take him serious? Only in, only in the sense that he's leading many people astray. That's the only reason we should take him serious. Uh, but nonetheless, as far as understanding the Trinity, this is, this is obviously, you know, not to sound arrogant or cocky, but this is laughable to say the least. And so he also says that the Holy Spirit is not a person. Now, the problem with this is that the scriptures teaches that the Holy Spirit is a person. Let's look at the scripture. We see here in John 14, 26, Jesus says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring, bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. So we see here Jesus speaking of the Holy Spirit in a personal sense. He's using he, which is a personal pronoun. So we do believe that the scriptures is teaching the Holy Spirit to be a person, uh, a he, right? Those are only used for personal beings. So we can clearly, clearly see that Mr. Gino doesn't even know the fundamental basis of what the Trinity teaches. And he seems to have a misunderstanding of church history. He doesn't realize that this is not something that we just come off the cuff with. This is something that uh, 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 theologians throughout church history has held to. Um, and they have reasons to hold to these things. Um, and so Gino Jenkins seems to be, Gino Jennings, should I say, seems to be out of his death with with this understanding of the Trinity, and uh, his argument seems to fall flat because he's just arguing based off emotion. He's a very emotional speaker anyway, but he, he seems to argue based off emotions and not understanding and not intellect and not understanding what exactly he's refuting. He's an emotional preacher, and if I can even call him that, he's an emotional guy, and you could tell that he allows his emotions to dictate what he's going to say.